After having understood uh, the basic meaning of uh, organizing function and the different steps which are to be performed right, for the function of organizing. Now coming to the next uh, topic that is organizational structure. Right. In the previous topic, uh, we were talking a lot about what are the authority responsibility relationships, right? defining the authority responsibility relationships. Now by doing so, by clearly assigning duties and establishing the authority and responsibility relationships, we are designing the organizational structure. Organizational structure is nothing else but it is a framework within which all the managerial tasks are to be performed. Right Now, when we talk of an organization structure, like I talk about, if I talk about your school, okay, in a school, we first have a managing committee. We have a managing committee, then we have a principal, then we have vice principal, right, we have different HMs. And then we have teachers. This is an organization structure, right? This is an organization structure which is followed in your school, right? Now, who is going to report to whom is very clear over here, right? Or who is order to give that is also very clear. The broad policy making is always done by the managing committee. Right? The basic objectives for a particular school are always discussed in the managing committee. Right? Who, depending upon the objective, who prepares the plans for the schools as a principal? Right? Then, principal is going to further delegate some authority to the vice principal to put these plan to give a practical shape to these plans. Right? And so on and so forth. So this is a basic organ. This is a structure within which all the activities of the schools are going to be performed. All the tasks are uh, relating to the school activities are going to be performed. Now, there are only two types of the organizational structures that we are going to be discussing over here. That is functional structure and divisional structure. When we talk about functional structure, it means grouping the activities of similar nature, the grouping the activities belonging to a particular function. Right? Grouping the similar activities belonging to a particular function. When we talk about function, it means production, sales, finance, research and development, human resource management. Right? Grouping all the activities related to a particular function and taking that particular function as a separate department. Taking that particular function as a separate department, right? Is this is called as your functional structure. This means there is a production department, there is a marketing department, there is a sales department, research and development department, and finance department. All of these functions they work as a separate department with their own departmental objectives to pursue. Right? Now, this is an ideal form of structure to be followed uh, when the scale at which an organization is operating is medium or small. When they have only one product, right? When they have only one product which they are selling for which they are performing these functions that is production, marketing, sales, finance and research and development, then each of these function can be organized as a separate department, right? Now, there are certain advantages of a functional structure as well as certain disadvantages. Now, when we talk about the advantages, first and foremost advantage is functional specialization. As I told you that these five different functions are now going to operate as different unit, different departments with their own departmental objectives. Now, when this particular department is only going to be performing, you know, activities related to production, right? So, Uni activities ko bar bar karne pe, bar bar karne pe, they are going to be, they are going to expedite, they are going to become experts in performing that particular activity. As a result, the activities under any particular department are going to be performed in the most effective and efficient manner. They are going to specialize in doing that particular job. So it leads to, it, give, it gives you the exam, uh, the benefit of, advantage of functional specialization, right? Each of the department is going to specialize in performing their respective function. Secondly, increased managerial efficiency. 
Now, how is it going to increase the managerial efficiency? I we define when we define the the word efficiency, we said that when we are able to complete the task at the minimum possible cost. Now, efficiency is going to be increased because when we said that it leads to functional specialization, meaning you specialize in performing a particular function. Right? When you specialize in performing that particular function, there are going to be least possible wastages. There are going to be least possible wastages in performing that particular function. So you are going to be uh, minimizing the cost involved. You are going to be minimizing the cost involved in performing that particular function. Right? You have experience. Uh, people are going to gain experience and expertise in performing that particular function. So thereby increasing their efficiency in performing that function. Then each function gets due attention right now as each of the function is organized as a separate department right they have their each function each function is going to have their own departmental departmental objectives which are to be achieved each uh, uh, function is going to have their own departmental policies which are to be followed right so there is not even a single function which is being ignored there is not even a single function which is being ignored and all of these functions they get their due importance training is simplified how is training simplified because agar production department may employees ki training hai to you only have to train them in one aspect that is production right different department if you have training uh, for let's say sales uh, department so you have to train them only in that aspect right no single employee is to be trained for all five functions it is going to be either for production or for marketing or for sales or for finance or R&D. So your training gets really simplified. But there are like we have advantages at the same time we, there are certain disadvantages okay, which exist for your functional structure of organization. That is emphasis is more on departmental objectives. Inter-department rivalry ho jati hai. Wherein, wherein each department wants to prove each department wants to prove that we are performing better than the other department. We are performing, we are doing our duty more effectively and efficiently as compared to the other department. Now, as a result, each of the department right, is going to focus more on the departmental objectives rather than the overall organizational objectives. You, lo you lose that view. Okay, we always say that you need to have a horse's eye view on organizational objective, meaning you have to your eyes have to be fixed on the organizational objectives, right? Because that is my final goal. But here, somewhere, uh, there's always an emphasis is laid more on the departmental objectives. Second, conflict of interest. Now, there can be, it's quite possible, like if the sales department, they say that in order to increase our sales,